Hey again guys, and welcome back. Today I set out trying to make a video on this specific boost converter, but once I start to get a look at what's going on here, I found this circuit so simple and so beautiful actually, so elegant, that I think I need to make a video on boost converters in general. So let me bring in a diagram of a boost converter and this looks nearly identical to the one on the Wikipedia article about boost converters and I drew it like this for a reason because this is super simple so how this thing works is you've got an inductor you've got a switch you've got a diode and you've got a cap basically when you close this switch you're shunting this positive to this negative through an inductor. An inductor will actually resist rapid changes in current by building or destroying magnetic fields. So when you close this switch, this inductor charges up with magnetic field. You open this switch, the inductor wants to continue current flow, so the magnetic field collapses and this side of the inductor here becomes in series with the positive. So whatever voltage source you have coming in here becomes in series with this inductor. It works as if, you know, it becomes a, it's its own little battery for that very moment. And current can only flow in one direction because this is open goes through this diode and charges this capacitor and then you the the magnetic field will keep on depleting until there's nothing and then you'll be back to the source voltage so what you want to do is before that happens you want to shut this switch again and charge more energy into here but when you shut this switch this end of the capacitor is shorted to ground except for this diode. So this capacitor cannot discharge this way. It's really neat circuitry and really simple. So ideally you'd open and close this switch before the uh, inductor has time to deplete its energy and before the, the source voltage drops below or the, the voltage total here drops to the level of just this. And you would be able to constantly maintain a charge on this capacitor and you'd want to pull less current on your boosted side than what it would take to deplete this capacitor completely in theory. So this thing is actually really simple. You've got switch, diode, inductor, capacitor, that's it, that's all. Now this module. So this module is interesting because I can actually draw the diagram of this module just by adding a few components here. So if I come over here and I add a capacitor. So this capacitor here will actually smooth whatever comes in here. So let's say your voltage source is sort of um, maybe it has a relatively high resistance. Maybe the, the wires are a little long or, or whatever. This capacitor will work as just a storage medium for you know um, voltage nearby charge nearby this uh, also has a second capacitor here which is much smaller and this capacitor is actually probably there to smooth out the really small 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 oscillations uh, the noise created by this circuitry on this side uh, this circuit also has an indicator, so it has a resistor, so that is uh, 2, 2, 2, so that's um, uh, 20, uh, 22 and 2 zeros, so 2.2K, and it has an LED, so red LED, on the boost side, so if you are getting any boosted voltage at all, this LED will come on and then 
if I draw a box around this, connect this to this here, then you've got our IC. So that's that's what our IC is doing on this side here. So internally there would be like a MOSFET and some drive circuitry inside that three pin IC to work the switch. So that's what we got. And if you're ever wondering how come these boost converters, they have a minimum voltage to be able to start, here's why. So you've got your positive voltage coming in when you first plug in. Positive voltage comes in here through this inductor, drops through this diode. So, you know, if it's a good quality diode, Schottky diode, maybe you get 0.2 volts. If you got a crappy quality or just a, a beefier uh, silicone diode, you could drop up to 0.7 volts. And then that voltage comes here on this side. So let's say you put in one and a half volts, you dropped half a volt there, you'd have one volt. And it needs to be enough for this IC to start the oscillation. So that is really interesting. And in fact, um, this capacitor here probably makes sure that this IC can kickstart itself. And once it kickstarted itself, then this here should rise up to the set uh, voltage. And it'll also sense, this is a, this will be a sense pin as well. So yeah, really interesting. Actually, you know, the, it could, it could actually take its voltage from here too. But regardless of how it works, this thing is genius. So let me show you the components up close on this thing and then we're going to get to testing it. Man, are these things ever well made? So here is our boost converter in all of its glory and you'll see that there's no more components here than there was on my list. So first, first of all you have the input. So the inputs here and here you see the in plus and the in minus. That in minus, same as on the diagram, goes all the way across to the ground of the boost side. So the ground is just the ground. Then over here on the in plus side, you have that capacitor I was showing you at the very beginning of the diagram. So there it is. There's the inductor connected to the input and to the switch side here. So between this pin and this pin, which is also connected to that middle pin there, so those two pins are the same. So the goes input, inductor, through the switch side here, and then out to the boosted positive. You also have two capacitors here, C2 and C3. Uh, C3 looks like the noise suppression capacitor because it's much smaller. Then you got C2, you got a little bit of a reserve capacitor. I think if you wanted to make this a reliable circuit, I would also add just a large uh, reservoir capacitor, like a 470 microfarad or something like that. And then here on the boosted 5 volts, you've got our resistor, 222, that's uh, 22 with two zeros. Uh, so 220, uh, I mean 2.2K, and our red LED going to the ground here. And that's it, that's all. This circuit, no wonder it's so cheap. There's only a, f a couple components. There is a circuit board. They put a footprint in for a USB connector, but you can use this as a fixed five volt boost circuit for pretty much anything. So let's hook it up to a power supply and see what the range is. I think I've just about managed to squeeze everything I wanted to squeeze into frame into frame. Um, so we know that our boost converter must go down. I'm, I mean, must go up. So this thing has a five volt output and I'm wondering how it will handle a five volt input. So I'm going to put this to volts on my decidedly low quality um, leads here. I also soldered a uh, 1K resistor to the output just because I thought it might be better if it does a little bit of work even though it's just five milliamps or so. Let's give this a go. Very interesting. It's actually boosting up. There's no choice in the matter. So five volts 
is no good. We can drop this. I'm going to drop it until we get some sort of stop boosting, basically. 5.7 volts. 5.6 5.5 so at 4 volts we're still half a volt over so unfortunately this thing does not look like it could be run on 18650s because an 18650 cell will pull out uh, 4.2 volts when it's fully charged it is possible however that this is because this is a um, uh, switching power supply but mm, doesn't look like it all right so let's go down some more let's go uh, three and three quarters yeah still half a volt too high let's go down to three and a half volts yeah no still too high Okay, 3.25 is still um, 0.3 volts too high off the 5 volt. We are entering, we are getting near the USB spec though. Even at 3 volts, it's still high. Interesting. So 2 and 3 quarters are still high. Wondering if this thing is actually biased a bit high. I will try this on batteries after. 5.2 at 2.5 volts input. Let's go down some more. 2 volts input, 5.1. Okay, that's uh, that's pretty damn close at this point. Let's go 1.75 input. There we go. We're getting very close now to the absolute 5 volts. I feel like these were designed to be run off uh, single cell batteries. Yeah, so one and a half volts, which is a uh, fully charged-ish alkaline battery, AA, AAA, we're getting five volts out. One and a quarter, so the 1.2 volts, let's just say, that's a nickel metal hydride um, AA nominal voltage. I'm gonna go down. 1 volt, that would be a discharged single cell battery. That's not bad. It's doing pretty well. Let's see. Well, just about at um, 3 quarters of a volt there, we are below our 5 volts. At half a volt, we are now at 3.3 volts, so now it's going down precipitously. I'm wondering if the boost will actually um, start at half a volt. So let's see. Cut off the voltage now. Turn it on. Uh, no. Oh, it does actually. Yeah, millivolts. Really needs about... That's half a volt there. Yeah, it needs nearly a volt. Probably shouldn't go below a volt. No, although 80 millivolts or 800 millivolts is not too bad. Yeah, it's not bad. So let's see if it starts at uh, 700 millivolts. So we're at nothing. Nope, it will not start. Need to increase this. Let's see the threshold that actually starts. Because don't forget, there's that voltage drop in that diode. There we go. About uh, 850 millivolts is the absolute minimum here. That's not too bad at all, though. So I think this thing would work to to boost up, uh, even if you're using. A single double-A cell because at that point or a single D cell for that matter but at that point um, yeah that's a that's a pretty damn discharged battery you won't be getting much current or much current capability yeah, out of a battery that only has 
uh, you know, 0.85 volts. And we can check the current here. Yeah, so j to put out that five or so milliamps, it's actually consuming uh, almost 10 times that because we are at such a low voltage at this point. So there's no way a AA would be able to support um, 47 milliamps at, you know, when it's at the 0.8 volts. So there's, there's no way. But if we increase this though, so if we put this to about what a charged up battery would be, actually no, it's still consuming quite a bit of current. And it's possible that the current is down low at the range where this is not so precise, but hey man, to make five milliamps, we're using 30. So you can, I mean, we're going from one volt here. Let's, let's make this easy. So we'll put this at one volt and we have five milliamps at five volts. So we would expect if it was 100% efficient, we would expect the current here to be five times because the voltage is five times lower. So it should be 25 um, milliamps if it was 100% efficient, which nothing is. And so that's nearly double, right? So the efficiency on this thing is not fantastic. But don't forget, this little chip has to go pretty high frequency on this tiny little inductor to try to fill up that capacitor. So yeah, quite interesting. Let me see if I can set this up a bit differently so we can actually see the efficiency. Got my multimeter in series now. Now there's a little bit of burden voltage going on in here, but it shouldn't be too, too much. But yeah, we have one volt in, uh, five volts, five milliamps out. And yeah, it's taking in uh, 40, about 42 milliamps of current to generate that five out. Now that's not so bad, um, a quality Double A battery may have 1800, like a rechargeable and a loop or something may have 1800 or 2200. Is it 1800 milliamp hours? I forget now. But uh, so it's not too bad, but yeah, I wouldn't be running this all the time. So I'd probably be switching this on with a device on demand because this will drain a double A pretty quickly. Now, mind you, you can use a D cell battery and then. Um, you'll have a lot more capacity to deal with. But yeah, this thing, not really suitable for a lithium ion battery, unless you're good with the 5.5 uh, to almost, yeah, 5.5 um, volt output. And so now if we crank this up to a fully charged lithium ion battery, so 4.2, Keeping in mind that we are still only pulling roughly five, five and a half milliamps. So let's go 5.2, uh, 4.2 volts. So we are pulling 11.6 milliamps. So yeah, it's actually um, fairly inefficient, but I guess most things in the real world are. So yeah, if you got any comments and questions and suggestions, put them in the comment section below. Um, if you're okay with the half a volt or three quarter of a volt over five volts, um, this thing would probably work for you on a lithium ion battery. And if you're not, then I mean, clearly it wouldn't. So I want to thank you again for watching and I hope to catch you in the next one.